Welcome to the Inlight online tutorial series. In this module, we're going to discuss some additional settings you may encounter while programming a daylight harvesting zone. After we have the basics of a daylight harvesting zone set up, there are situations where we need to adjust how that zone operates. If you don't know the basics of setting up a daylight harvesting zone, please pause the video now and check out our basic daylight harvesting module. The speed of daylight harvesting, multiple zones, and on-off control are some of the additional controls to daylight harvesting InLight can provide. At the end of this module, you'll be able to describe and understand the advanced settings in creating a unique daylight harvesting zone, as well as how to implement them in your programming. A couple of things to note before we get started. When we use the term lights, we mean any InLight output device, like an InLight enabled fixture or relay. Power pack, our equivalent in light air device. When we use the term switch or wall pod, we mean any in light device that is issuing switch commands on, off, and dim. These can come from in pod M series devices or switch channels set up on an in pod touch. You'll need a basic understanding of the in light network and the sensor view software. There will be additional training information at the end of this presentation. If you'd like more information than what you see in these videos, or to enroll in any of our instructor-led events where we learn about these topics in a hands-on environment, please use the QR codes to the right to visit Acuity Academy. Feel free to pause the video now. After we have our threshold set up by set point and sunlight discount factor, shown in our basic daylight harvesting module, we use photocell profile dimming rate to determine how quickly the photocell adjusts the lights. We can find this setting in the Devices tab under a photocell's default settings. Out of the box, this is set to normal, and you have five levels between slowest and fastest. The time it takes for the dim level to go from maximum to minimum is 700 seconds for slowest, 350 seconds for slow, 130 seconds for normal, 35 seconds for fast, and 5 seconds for fastest. If we have multiple rows of lights in a daylight harvesting zone following a single photocell, but we want them to dim at different levels, we can offset them using dual zone offset. Dual zone offset is found under the light's default settings and is what the lights use to determine what dim level they should be at in comparison to the photocell. At a 0% offset, the lights will track exactly with the photocell. Out of the box, this is set at 0% and can be adjusted from negative 200 to positive 200. As an example, imagine we have a room with one photocell and two rows of lights where a sequence of operation calls for an offset. Row 1 is closest to the window, and we set its dual zone offset to 0. Row 2 is the next row in from the window, and we set its dual zone offset to positive 20%. Row 1 will track with the photocell's level, while row 2 will stay at 20% above the photocell's level. So, if the photocell dim level was at 50%, row 1 would be at 50%, and row 2 would be at 70%. This is not limited to two separate zones of control and can be used to control as many separate zones as needed. When a dual zone offset is used, lights could have their full dimming range limited when following a photocell. Unlimited photocell dimming range gives us the ability to give lights full range and is found under the photocell's default settings. Out of the box, this is disabled and the photocell can only dim between 0 and 100%. After enabling, the photocell can adjust between negative 100 and positive 200%. This is important to enable for zones with a dual zone offset. For instance, if unlimited photocell dimming range was disabled and lights were set up with a dual zone offset of positive 20%, in periods of high sunlight, the photocell would dim to 1% and the lights would never follow the photocell below 21%. If the dual zone offset is set outside of positive or negative 100%, the lights will still not have access to their full dim range, even if unlimited photocell dimming range gets enabled. To illustrate, if we have a dual zone offset set to positive 110, with unlimited photocell dimming range enabled, the photocell would dim to negative 100%, but the lights would never dim below 10%. Certain sequences of operation will call for an interior photocell to turn lights on and off. ADC photocell on off can be enabled to meet these requirements. It's found in a photocell's default settings and disabled out of the box. After enabling, lights will turn on and off if they are tracking the photocell. This works by the photocell comparing its foot candle reading to one of two thresholds. If the lights are off, the sensor will compare its reading to the set point 
multiplied by the sunlight discount factor. If the foot candle reading is below this, the sensor will start its countdown to turn lights on. If the lights are on, the sensor again compares its reading to the set point multiplied by the sunlight discount factor plus the artificial light contribution and a safety factor. If the reading is above this, the photocell will start its countdown to turn lights off. Remember, any lights that are in the same tracking channel as that photocell, once this is enabled, will turn on and off with that photocell, even if follow photocell mode is not enabled. So if you do enable this, make sure you remove any lights you don't want turning on and off from the tracking channel. Once a photocell reaches either threshold to turn lights on and off, it will start a countdown period determined by the photocell transition on and off setting. These settings are found under a photocell's default settings and only become available after ADC photocell on off is enabled. Out of the box, transition off is set to 10 minutes and transition on is set to 45 seconds. Both can be adjusted between 45 seconds and 25 minutes. As it is far more important to turn lights on when needed than turning the lights off, Transition on should normally be set lower than transition off. Now, we know multiple inlight settings we can adjust during creation of a daylight harvesting zone. These are designed to meet codes across the country and end user desired sequences of operation. Thank you for watching our tutorial. You have just learned the advanced settings to program a daylight harvesting zone. Be sure to check out our other daylight harvesting modules for wall pod tracking adjustments and inlight air specific content. For more information, please reach out to Acuity Brands Technical Support at the phone number listed or use the links provided. Keep an eye out for new content and feel free to send an email to acuitycontrolstraining at acuitybrands.com if there are any other topics you'd like to see.